guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodle. Oh, welcome back to my channel. So I'm here for another mask making session and we are doing our reruns if you've joined me recently. So we are week number 107, which doing the reruns is week number seven. Um, so what I've brought along with me is a whole bunch of papers. I've got some 12 by 12s, pretty ones, um, and some um, A4 printed papers and also some um, sheet music as well. And yeah, I think I've even got a couple of just plain coffee dyed pages in here somewhere as well. Um, so just a whole bunch of different things that we can use. And what we're going to do, we're going to make fold over booklet type things. So let's kind of just straight away crack on. Oh, if you're joining in, sorry, the other things that you're going to need along with your papers, you will need possibly like a glue spreader. I just use like, you know, any kind of card, like a, you know, hotel key card or in this case, an old Costa card. Oh, it's, it's very gluey, I'm afraid I really use it to um, <laughs> to its last, last days. Um, or, you know, reward card, anything like that. Um, and you will probably need a bone folder. If you don't have a bone folder, you can just use your scissor handle. That will work perfectly fine. Um, and of course you're going to need some glue. I think that's probably everything that we're going to need, to be honest. And then of course, if you want to decorate, you're going to, you know, just need a variety of things to decorate your pieces with. So let's try and get making one straight away with, I think the just A4 page, um, first of all. So let me just find something here that might go quite nicely. So what do you think to this? Yeah, so all, <clears throat> all I'm doing here is um, matching it up with something so that it's got something inside that kind of coordinates with the outside, if, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to trim it off only because otherwise, obviously, it's going to be the full height of my journal page, which, you know, it's not necessarily a problem, but I don't necessarily want it the full full height. So I'm going to just glue these two together. Now, I'm doing this because these are copy paper thickness. Sorry, I've now taken my lid off and straight away got messy, messy glue nozzles. So let me just clean that up. I've just that second topped my glue up. So, um, yeah, I kind of thought I'd been prepared but forgot then to wipe the nozzle clean um yeah I'm doing this glue in together because it's copy paper thickness so personally I mean I just always find copy paper quite thin and because I'm quite a clumsy person I'm likely to tear it you know tear well tear it um so you know for me it's kind of just helpful to be able to just glue a couple of sheets together the other thing is when you glue the couple of sheets together or you know two sheets together it takes on quite a quite a nice kind of squishy texture a, a sort of squishy feel um which is really rather nice so that's another kind of bonus for doing it i have got some other sheets here um that maybe won't need reinforcing you know they're thicker thicker printed now when i did this last time and this is another quite good reason for doing these reruns is because you know over time we maybe discover different ways of doing things or you know, I'm not necessarily saying better better ways, but ways that suit us at that point in time. You know, maybe we've kind of discovered different supplies or, you know, something like that. And, oops, just on the paper now. Um, yeah, so I might decide that actually this time around, you know, I don't necessarily need to reinforce when it's quite thick paper I did reinforce it last time even when it was you know was thick paper I don't know whether I would necessarily bother doing that now so all we're going to do is glue our sheets together and then fold it in half like that <clears throat> now for some reason I now can't see my bone folder oh where is it uh -huh. okay there we go. And then all we're going to do is make a little kind of booklet. So, I mean, obviously here, I've got this little crease going on. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> and then we're going to just fold this in to create a little pocket sort of book like that. Okay. Now I will trim this down in a second. So if you're thinking, oh, that's not straight at all, 
it's not the problem I'm going to trim it down now I find this easiest to fold it back on itself because then you can obviously see where it needs to line up to and then fold it over you know what's going to be the right way because of course you know it's easier to do it where you can line it up with the other side rather than just guess oh she says as she does it completely wrong oh this is a do as I say not as I not as I do video obviously okay so we can then squish that down like that oh this is very saturated with glue my glue's obviously oozing out today and it's now very saturated with glue so yeah probably not not the best really and then I'm going to just trim mine down here you know whilst it's kind of glued together and then across here like that okay and then all I'm going to do is obviously glue my pockets down like this now of course you could stitch this I'm just not stitching it because you know I'm trying to kind of keep it as accessible for everybody as it can be and obviously not everybody has a sewing machine or access to a sewing machine so you know or maybe you just don't really want to put paper through your sewing machine um you know and I can understand why you might feel a bit dubious about doing that so we just then pop that down like that whoops and on this side as well there we go and that's your little book so obviously then you can decorate the cover make it look pretty and then you've just got a couple of pockets in here okay so I will just trim trim this up a bit because I have not made a good job at all of my cutting very very wonky okay right okay so that's all we're going to do now I will probably yeah I'll do one more to kind of demonstrate again and then I'm going to hopefully do it more assembly line style so <clears throat> Let's just bring in, bring in another sheet. And I might back this onto some sheet music. So just take my sheet music here. So that was my Savile Row paper, by the way. Sorry, I forgot to mention. And this is my um, French blue. So let's just cut this down again, just so it's not quite so tall. Trim it down like that. I mean, to be honest, you don't even really need to have the, um, you know, paper as big as this. You could kind of cut it down slightly more if you wanted. So perhaps I'll do that for this one and then it would be slightly narrower piece. Okay, like that. And we're going to glue that down. Okay. So again, just go right the way around my page. Because, I mean, the sheet music, obviously, it's, you know, it's pretty thin too. It's not kind of thick paper, is it, sheet music? It's, um, you know, quite a fragile kind of paper, just like the, the copy paper. So it's quite good to double that up. I mean, of course, you could just use the sheet music Oops. so that you had sheet music pattern on this. And you could use sheet music on the inside, to be honest. Or, of course, you could use sheet music on the outside and something like coffee dyed paper on the inside. You know, just mix them up. And to be honest, there's no reason, actually, why you couldn't do this the other way around. So, like, have your sheet music on the outside and then have a decorative pattern paper on the inside. So, for instance, like this would be, you know, folded like that, if you see what I mean. So, that would be the inside. I'm not going to do that on this one, but you know, there's no reason why you couldn't do that. Okay, so I'm just going to trim the edges down. Like that. Okay. And then this edge here. Okie dokie. And then I'm going to tidy this up, but I'm going to just fold it in first on this one. So let's just go in here to the middle. I can just then squish that down with my bone folder. 
And then, of course, make your pockets. I'm just going to fold this one in round about here. Okay, squish that down. And then, like I said before, I find it easiest to kind of go backwards on itself like that because that's going to help you find the right, you know, the right size. Um, I mean, you could kind of guess, you know, and try and do it the other way, but this is just a nice and easy way to do it and then fold it back on itself like that. You know, I just think it's the, it's the easiest way to do it really. So again, squish that down like that okay and then we can obviously trim that down so I'll just trim it down now quickly one and then this one okie dokie <clears throat> and we'll just glue this down And we will just press that down here. And that's your little booklet, like that. So they're super pretty, aren't they? You know, and of course, you know, they're just plain at the moment, but you can then decorate them up. So I'm just going to literally just do them um, more sort of uh, factory, you know, assembly line style by just kind of preparing all my papers, I think, and then folding them and gluing them afterwards. So, yeah, let's give that a try and um, see how we get on. So, as I say, I've got some 12 for 12 papers here as well. Um, and I've obviously got my printable papers as well. So I'm going to just kind of mix them up and do some and some. And we'll just kind of do it like that. Just wondering whether I could have this actually on the inside of here. So I'm just going to cut this down again, you know, height wise. Because otherwise it's going to be really tall to have on a page. So like that. Now obviously this is a 12 by 12. Now this is quite thick. So again, I'm going to kind of cover the inside, I think. I will double check what's on the inside of this, but. Okay, so I mean, it's got these butterflies, which I don't mind. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to cover it up, particularly as I've got this torn piece. But of course, I don't really need all of this covered up because, you know, it's quite thick already. So I don't need to get too carried away doing that. So I think what I'll do is just bring in some book page. Just finding a suitable book page here. Hold on. Yeah. Honestly, you can have just all the stuff on the planet, can't you? But you still don't necessarily have the thing that you really need. Okay, so I've got this book page here. Let me just see. Okay. So all I'm going to do is glue this down kind of approximately in the middle. <laughs> Again, I mean, I'm just totally eyeballing this. It's, you know, no exact science going on here. And then just a bit down the edges, like that. Okay, pop that one down, like that. And do you see what I mean? Because the paper is quite thick, I don't need the um, you know, I don't need to kind of like, oh, what's the word? I'm not trying to make it more robust. I'm just literally trying to cover up what was there. So like here on the sides, I don't need to do anything with those. This is literally just for decorative purposes. It's not to reinforce it at all. So I'm going to just trim that off at the back. And then I'll just kind of demonstrate. So then we're just going to fold it in half like that. Oops, I could have done with um, making a better job of that, but never mind. Squish that down like that. Okay, and then what you've got is obviously, you know, a decorative inside. Oops, made a horrible, horrible job of that. 
just kind of squish it down a bit with my bone folder and then you can go in with your pockets like that okay so one and then the other one okie dokie fold that over this way and that's it so as you can see you know it's not reinforced for strength it's just reinforced to get rid of that color you know the red color so yeah i'm just going to leave it like that and i'm just going to glue this down here and then i might have to trim up a little bit because i've got some of that red showing at the top of that book page but again you know it's fine i mean to be honest it it's not that visible i don't really need to even do it but i probably will but I might do it once I come to use it or, you know, in a little while when it's drier, the glue, rather than do it right now. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, to be honest, that's how I think, you know, if you've got thicker paper or, for instance, like scrapbook paper, the middle needs reinforcing purely as a decorative measure rather than reinforcing it. Because, you know, this paper is quite thick. So this is a sturdy pocket anyway. So, you know, you don't, I don't think, need to kind of reinforce it at all. Okay, so that's that one. So, yeah, I'm just going to kind of do it more assembly line style now. Um, just literally kind of putting things um, sorry, I'm just, just focusing on which paper I want. Yeah, just putting things together kind of in a um, more eclectic way. So again, let's just get, or not eclectic, sorry, more uh, assembly line style. Sorry, <laughs> totally waffling on about rubbish there. Sorry about that. Right, let's just cut this one down. I was just wondering whether we could have had this like in another one in the center. It would look quite pretty. Um, let's just put in another one anything is I don't think you're going to see that much of it to be honest so no I'm going to yeah do my original plan of gluing it down onto the onto the sheet music to make a you know a piece itself so just put that down got quite a significant piece of sheet music there so I mean I could keep that to be honest to do like collage and things oh my goodness and that's why we all have so many scraps isn't it you know because i just can't bring myself to get rid of just even the tiniest piece i mean to me it didn't feel like it was that tiny but of course to anyone who's not a junk journaler they would look at it and be like what is wrong with you why would you keep that skinny slither of me you know sheet, sheet music especially as i've actually got loads of loads more sheet music <laughs> it's just just one of these things we do as junk journalers, isn't it? Right. So again, just spread that out with my glue spreader. Right, so I did say, didn't I, that I was going to stop talking us through this. So yeah, I'm just going to do all my gluing like this, you know, all my prepping the faces in one sort of measure and then all the cutting, all the folding and all of that. So yeah, I'm going to stop talking us through what we're doing. And we can just relax now and, you know, enjoy, enjoy our time. So I hope everyone's had a good start to the week. That was my flower press collage page, by the way. And this is my birdhouse kit. So, um, you know, because I know that people like to know what kits I'm using. So, yeah, I hope that everybody's had a good start to the week. Obviously, early days, it's... Um, you know, for me, I'm filming this on the Monday, and I say all this all the time, but for anyone who's only just joined, there we go. Oops, I've got another quite sizable piece of sheet music, so again, probably can't really quite bring myself to bin that, so I'll just keep it. Excuse the back of this, won't you? It's obviously where I've printed printables, you know, before. So, yeah, for me, it's Monday. I'm filming this quickly now before we go on our holiday tomorrow. So we're going to Wales. I've been talking about this for a few weeks now. So we're off to Wales tomorrow. So today is going to be a kind of busy day, packing, getting ready to go and all of that stuff. Um, yeah, I've been in touch with the 
you know, the host, as they call it, because we're just doing like an Airbnb. Um, so I've been in touch with her. I have to say, I was really slack. She had been emailing me for a couple of days and, oh, as usual, I'm running behind my emails. So, yeah, I've only just got back to her this morning to say, you know, we're looking forward to coming and all of that good stuff. And can you email me the address and directions and, well, just address really, but yeah, the address and things. I've looked up to make sure there's a supermarket within kind of, you know, reasonable distance so, so that I know what stuff I need to take with us because obviously it's an Airbnb. So it's actually a little sort of bungalow place that we're going to. And um, yeah, I'm going to kind of obviously take, you know, take lots of food from home, um, you know, because I like to do that to keep the costs all down. Well, and also to, you know, make sure that we're not kind of just being unnecessarily kind of overeating and what have you. Well, no, let's face it, it's really to keep the cost down. So, yeah, I've um, checked out whether there's a supermarket because, you know, I'm going to obviously take some food with us. I will take some food for like, you know, the first evening and the first breakfast, like some cereal and things, just in case by the time we arrive, it's too late to get to the supermarket. Um, but I just wanted to Google to make sure that there was a supermarket quite near because that's going to be able to help me gauge, you know, how much stuff we need to take with us. Um, you know, because obviously if we're like five minutes from the supermarket, we can pop there, you know, a few times should we need. If we're like half an hour away from it, we might have to just kind of go there once and do like a, a shop, you know. Um, we'll just kind of play it by ear a bit. But I mean, on the map, obviously I don't have the address of the property yet. Um, but it looks like there is an Asda supermarket somewhere in the vicinity. So, you know, I'm hoping that that means it's reasonably close to the property where we're staying. But obviously without the address, I don't really know that for definite. But yeah, I've already said to the children, you know, I'm not going to be doing like loads of cooking. So we're going to be having very much kind of, I don't know, pizzas, you know, bung in the oven stuff. Um, you know, I don't mind doing some pasta in a jar or something like that, but I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be chopping vegetables or anything like that. So, yeah, you know, might just buy some of those ready prepared salad bowls or something to have like with some pizza or something. So we're having some vegetables. This is from my new um, Kings Park papers. Um, and actually, so is this one. So I'm going to do this one as well. Um... Yeah, so that's kind of the big news in our house is obviously holiday has finally arrived. So yeah, we're going to have a busy day packing up the car and ooh, packing up the car, packing our bags, all of that good stuff. So yeah, I'm going to be doing all of that today. Feeling slightly nervous about the drive. I mean, it sounds really pathetic, doesn't it? But I'm, I'm not the biggest lover of driving, it's got to be said. Um, you know, I'd rather not drive, really. I'd rather be driven. Um, but, yeah, we, we're obviously, you know, I'm going to be driving. It's. I think it's about four hours drive. So, I mean, it's not too, too bad. But a lot of it is motorway driving, and that's, of course, my least favourite driving. So, um, yeah, I'm kind of psyching myself up ready for the drive but it's fine we're going to leave I think about 10 o'clock in the morning tomorrow and we're just going to um you know take it easy stop at the services when we need to stop and you know all of that kind of stuff you know like tie the day in with the drive if you see what I mean not kind of go rushing there thinking oh we must get there by this time or that time but more just view it as you know the drive's going to take as long as it will take I mean obviously you know, I've given the lady a rough time I'm expecting to arrive. So, I mean, that's kind of taken into account stopping at services and things. But, you know, we're not going to be eating at the services or anything. I will probably take some sandwiches with us that I've made from home. Um, but we will, of course, be stopping at services for the toilet and things. So, yeah, probably. I mean, I've thought maybe twice, but, you know, who knows, maybe more. But twice seems definitely like a good a good kind of bet that we would definitely stop twice um this is from my english country garden kit <clears throat> so yeah that's our big 
something and the lady who you know the host of the property she's emailed and she said that the weather forecast is looking kind of dryish so i mean that's all good because i mean actually wales is not a very dry place anyway so i mean the fact that we're even having a dry forecast is kind of like better than expected better than hoped so yeah i mean fingers crossed but i mean to be honest I'm really not even too bothered. I mean, at the end of the day, it is what it is. And actually, you know, as they say, a change is as good as a rest. So, I mean, actually, to be honest, you know, if the weather's not fantastic, I don't really mind. You know, it would just be nice to get away from home, away from, you know, all what kind of we've had going on this year. And, you know, like, not have to cook. Um, not that I have done a great deal of cooking lately, it's got to be said, because it's the school holidays and I'm always very rubbish in school holidays, so we've been having very, very silly meals and, um, you know, like, yeah, very silly meals, kind of bung in the oven, rubbish and, you know, lots of, I don't know, McDonald's and things like that. Um, but yeah, so it's just nice to get away. I'm going to obviously take some, you know, some things to do crafting. I'm hoping that um, I'm going to, you know, be able to kind of work on my laptop and, you know, respond to emails. There is internet there. Now, I have to say, it does say on the thing that it's not the fastest. So, you know, I always think, interpret that, you know, loosely. If it says that, the chances are it's pretty abysmal, isn't it? So, obviously, it is my intention that I will be fully contactable, contactable. Um, but just in case I'm even worse than usual and, you know, I must just apologise again for just how rubbish I am with emails and things. Um, but it could be that actually I've, you know, not really got very reliable internet access. So, yeah, but I'm, yeah, I'm going to pack a craft bag. So to be honest, I mean, isn't it terrible, but that's more exciting to me packing my craft bag than packing my clothes. I mean, what does that really say? It's not really saying saying a lot, is it? That I would rather be packing my craft things than packing my clothes. It's uh, not great, but yeah, I'm going to be packing up my craft things. And I'm kind of just thinking, um, you know, clothes-wise, I'm going to just take lots of layers. I'm just, just looking at this to see what might go in here. Um, just packing lots of layers. No, that's not going to go. Um, Craft-wise, I'm not quite sure what to take, to be honest. I've got a couple of new kits that I would quite like to, you know, work on or work with and maybe kind of make a couple of journals with the new kits. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm not expecting to actually make a journal while I'm there, you know, because I won't have all my binding things and all of that type of stuff. But I'm wondering whether I could just take... Um, you know, the kits that I, or kit or kits that I want to work with and make a lot of the ephemera ready so that when I get home, I've got a lot of it already prepped. So yeah, I'm kind of thinking might do, might do that. I'll probably take some fussy cutting things. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I mean, that's the other thing is sometimes when I go on holiday, it turns out that my craft things are taking up more space than my clothes things, which... I mean, what's that about, for goodness sake? You know, that's not normal, is it? To have more craft things than clothes. So, yeah, I'm going to try and be a little bit, a little bit good, a little bit disciplined, but who knows? That's just the plan. And who knows how disciplined I will end up being. But, yeah, kind of been thinking about it for the last couple of days, or what, what should I take in the way of crafting? <laughs> you know loosely loosely thought about what should I take in the way of clothes but mainly what should I take in the way of crafting stuff so yeah but just I mean to be honest as long as I've just got a big variety of paper and things it's probably good enough right okay so I think that's probably going to be it for my um you know papers so I'm going to trim them all down and then do like all the folding so we'll just trim this up here Okay. Yeah, anyway, so, um, but I've got videos kind of all ready and prepped and things. So, 
you know, there should be videos every day. I do apologise again about the fact that I again missed a video the other day. I'm so sorry. It's, I don't know what it is, to be honest. I mean, that day, I think, again, I'd kind of been in, edited the video, made the thumbnail and all that stuff, put the description in, and then just sometimes what happens is I literally forget to actually do the scheduling. It's so frustrating. So I just apologise so much. And while I'm on the apologies, I just need to just apologise. I'm so behind with comments at the moment. Now, I know that's probably no consolation to anyone, but I say this all the time. It's not that I'm disinterested, far from it. It's actually the opposite. It's because I can't help but get engaged in chit chat. So, you know, kind of, I read the comments and then I think, oh, I know what you mean. Or, you know, oh, yes, I had that happen. And of course, I then want to reply to all of the comments. And so subsequently, it just makes it very, 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 very time consuming. So I think, you know, I'm going to have to just stop, stop with that and, you know, just kind of heart them all um but it is very hard to do that because if you're naturally a chatty person to read and not respond it's really 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 a challenge so yeah that's my first apology is how behind I am with comments so really really very sorry and I you know appreciate your commenting so 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 much I mean, you guys, I know that I've said this before. I mean, you get me through so many days where I'm having perhaps, you know, not a brilliant day. Um, and especially kind of with what's going on at the moment. Um, you know, I can't tell you how much it means to me to have you guys amazing support. It's just so invaluable. You know, and I mean, alongside that, there's kind of inspiration through comments and things because lots of you come up with amazing suggestions or ideas of alternative ways of doing things and, you know, other products to try and all of that kind of stuff. So, you know, I just, I can't tell you how much it means to me. So I apologise that I am pretty rubbish with the whole, you know, staying on top of the comments. I also apologise for being so slack on email as well. Um, I mean, obviously it's school holidays at the moment and, um, yeah, so obviously my daughter's been at home all the time and things, and I have been trying my best to kind of, um, you know, juggle things. But, you know, obviously sometimes just something has to give, doesn't it? And, you know, unfortunately, you know, I would I would hate for it to be my shop, but unfortunately it's kind of had to be my shop and my channel. I've had to kind of like take the back seat a little bit more due to, you know, family kind of things. So, yeah, I'm really, really sorry about that. Um... And then the final apology that I really, really, really have to make. And I have to say thank you very much to Tanya over at Tatty Treasure because I actually was talking to her in an email about this. And, um, you know, she is so fantastic. I mean, she's such a brilliant people person. And, you know, she always has, a, you know, amazing way with people, I think, and a really brilliant way of putting things. And, you know, was saying to her about the Facebook group and, you know, I just feel so gutted because, I mean, I really love interacting with you guys and I have not got on that group. Oops, just torn that paper again. It's where it's very soggy with the glue. Um, yeah, I haven't got on there for absolutely ages now. So that's my first apology is I'm so very sorry that I haven't gone on there. And honestly, I feel so gutted that I haven't because I love, love going on there. And, you know, seeing what you guys have been up to, seeing all the new projects that you guys have done, you know, it's just an amazing sort of inspirational um, place, I guess, to hang out, you know, to go and have a chill out. So that's my first thing is I'm absolutely gutted that I haven't really managed to go on there um, at all. I mean, like for months. So, you know, a massive thank you to everybody who has still persevered being a member of the group and... You know, I know that you're all having such a blast on there. I know that Michelle, she had been away for a little while. She had kind of busy things going on in her life, you know, and I just, you know, she's back now and she's absolutely incredible. So a massive, massive shout out and thank you to Michelle. She's, you know, just unbelievably brilliant. Um, and, um, you know, massive thank you to all of you guys who still are going on there and, you know, participating in like the you know, the swaps and the random act of kindness things and all of those kinds of things. I hope you're all having a really, really wonderful time. And, you know, believe me, 
it's on my list of things that I do eventually want to kind of get involved with myself. So that's, you know, that's kind of the second part of the apology. And I guess the final thing really, and this is, um, you know, Tanya who kind of said, well, you know, it's probably better to just kind of put it out there really. So, you know, I really got to be honest and say, you know, I just don't know when I'm going to actually get onto the Facebook group. But all the time that I have kind of the things going on that are currently going on, you know, with my divorce and all of that kind of stuff, it's very doubtful that I'm going to be on there anytime soon in the capacity that I would like to be. So, you know, or in any, <laughs> any capacity at the moment. So that's kind of, you know, where I'm at with that. But I just want you to know that, you know, it's not lack of interest or lack of desire to go on there. I would love nothing better to be on there and chatting with all of you, looking through all of your fantastic projects and all of that kind of stuff. So I just really hope that you're all having a lovely time. I mean, I know that kind of in the earlier days when I had got on there, you know, so many lovely, kind ladies and all saying what a lovely, friendly, welcoming group it was and, you know, how much fun you were all having and that you know, we had such a nice bunch of ladies in the group, um, you know, so I just, yeah, I really hope that you all still, f you know, feel that way, and um, yeah, I just really do apologise that I'm not on there, you know, m as much as I would like to be, or I, even at all, um, but yeah, please know that it's not lack of interest, and you know, as soon as things calm down, I've got something planned actually to do with the Facebook group, um, that hopefully, you know, will be kind of a source of inspiration and a source of quite, you know, excitement for everybody. So, yeah, I do have that kind of in the pipeline in my head. I haven't done anything towards it in the the physical, if you see what I mean, in the physical sense. I've just got a plan in my, in my mind at the moment of something I would like to do very much, you know, with the Facebook group kind of thing. So, yeah, hopefully that will be you know, realistically, hopefully the autumn, you know, I hope long before the winter, but yeah, you know, we've got to face it that that could be a possibility, but I'm hoping kind of in the autumn that I will be able to do what I've got in mind, um, you know, with the Facebook group. So yeah, please don't kind of um, think that I'm just totally kind of disinterested. I'm so completely not. And um yeah, thank you so much to everybody who's still kind of, you know, sticking with it and participating. And, you know, I just hope that you're all having a really, really, really wonderful time. So, you know, yeah. So, but lo and behold, or lo and behold, rest assured, perhaps I should say, I do have a plan in mind um, with the Facebook group that hopefully is going to be exciting and wonderful for, for us all. So, um, you know, yeah, that's kind of that's that um yeah I think that's kind of it probably with regards to announcements um yeah that's that's pretty much it so there we go okay let me just trim this down a little bit we've been having very peculiar weather again this week I have to say it's been a bit of a mixed bag all around so I don't know really what's happened to our summer this year, but it's been a bit of a bit of a washout, it's got to be said. Okay. There we go. Oh, I tried these really, really, really nice um, things the other day. You know, like the Rice crispy cake treat things that you get or that, you know, possibly you used to make when you were children or make with your children. Um, so, I mean, I'm not vegan. I know I've talked about this loads of times before, but I'm not vegan. But I do eat a lot of vegan food and I am vegetarian. And to be honest, the more time that goes by, the more vegan things I'm eating. So, you know, I eat very little that isn't vegan, although I do still have milk in my tea. Um, so, yeah, but gradually I'm kind of veering over to more and more vegan kind of substitutes. So um, at the weekend we had a picnic and 
I bought these lovely Rice Krispie treat things, um, like with a really nice thick kind of chocolate layer on the top. Um, they were from Sainsbury's supermarket over here in the UK, but they were 100% vegan and um, they were absolutely delicious. I think they were Sainsbury's own brand, um, but they were so, so, so scrumptious, I have to say. Really, really, really lovely. And you know when you've had something that's really nice and then you keep thinking about it? That's kind of where I'm at at the moment with those. They were like really scrumptious. So I can't actually wait to go and buy some more of them and eat them again. They were so nice. Okay. I have to say at the same time, I'd bought these vegan um, millionaire shortbreads. Shortbreads? Shortcake. Um, oh, they were nowhere near as nice. They were very dry. Yeah, very dry, very disappointing. So yeah, out of the two, if you're likely to go and buy some, I can't, you know, I can't tell you what they were called. I don't, I don't recall like, you know, seeing a kind of particular name, um, but the millionaire shortbreads or shortcake, not nice. Well, it was okay. I mean, it wasn't not nice, but they were very dry. I definitely wouldn't buy them again. Um, but the, you know, the Rice Krispie things, wow, delicious absolutely delicious so yeah highly recommend those it's nice to have sort of some nice treats isn't it okay yeah we'll probably have some things like that when we're on holiday to be honest like sort of picnic food and things you know for dinners and i bought some caramelized onion hummus Oh my goodness, that was delicious. It didn't have any like lumps of onion or anything like that. Um, but it must have had like a caramelised onion sort of, I don't know, flavour kind of running through it. But again, that was also very, very scrumptious. So yeah, I mean, we'll probably have some things like that for dinner. Like, you know, picnicky things. The kids will have some scotch eggs and all of that stuff. You know, maybe some baguettes and some some soft cheese. I also bought some vegan cheese actually which was also really good. And I had it with pickle. I do love pickle. So yeah, that was really nice. And then um, we have a brand over here called Corn. Now I'm not sure whether that's available everywhere. Um, I'm trying to think really whether I've seen it in other places. I feel like it maybe is available more these days. Um, I'm trying to think whether I've seen it in France. I might have seen it in France, I'm not sure. And it's such a long time since I've been to the States, to be honest, I couldn't really tell you whether it's there or not. I don't think it was there last time I went, but as I say, that was many years ago now. Um, anyway, we have this brand corn and they sell vegetarian, so they're not vegan, they're vegetarian cocktail sausages. Oh my goodness, they are so yummy, so yummy. So I'm slightly addicted to them anyway. So yeah, I had quite a few of those in the um the picnic the other day. Um yeah, I'm thinking that we will have quite a few things like that on our holiday for our dinners, you know. Nice picnic -y foods. I like eating that way. I don't know about you guys, but you know, that's my type of eating, I think. I quite like cold food, I've decided. I'm quite a cold food fan. And um yeah cold food and you know itty bitty foods that you kind of eat I always quite like you know that you can kind of pick at okay right trim that off okay right let's just quickly whoops glue these down okay Oh, I must go and peg the washing out in a minute. I've done a wash load and um, I just put it on spin actually just before I, you know, came to do this video and I thought, oh, I must put it out in a minute on the line to get it dry because there's a few things in there that will be coming on holiday with us. And of course now I've forgotten and it's still in the machine. Okay. Just trim that off there. Right, and we are now on the last one. So just going to do the last one here and then we will decorate one up. So let's just take 
this one, fold it in. Okay. Had a nice beach day as well the other day. Oh, I know what we did that was really fun actually. Um, so on Thursday, we had a day, we live um, on the south coast and there's a kind of seaside town there, um, which gets mocked quite a lot, I have to say. But we always have quite a fun day there. So we went over there and um, we had gone for like lunch in just like a pub, just one of these chain kind of pubs. And um, the pub had a garden, which was, you know, really nice. It was a really nice garden. So we sat out there and then when we were walking back to the car, you know, we kind of went like the long way round. And we just walked past like some arcades, you know, the sort of arcades with like the two piece slot machines and things. So I said, oh, well, let's go in the arcades for a bit. Oh, well, anyway, we went into the arcades. Oh, we had such a good time. You know, when you just do those impromptu kind of things. So, yeah, I mean, we just played on the 2P machines and, um, you know, we then went in another one. There was another arcade, so we went into the other one. And then they've got a Ferris wheel at the moment. It's just a temporary thing, but we went on then the Ferris wheel. And then the kids had some cheesy chips. They seem to be all the rage at the moment. So they had some cheesy chips, you know, and then we went home. But, oh, we didn't get home till like 7 o'clock in the evening. We had such a nice afternoon. It was one of those days where the weather was not looking very good and we were kind of like, oh, what should we do, what should we do? And, um, yeah, I mean, actually, I might as well just say the name of the place that we went. So um, my middle son then said, oh, well, let's go to Bogner. So it's called Bogner Regis. And, um, yeah, as I say, it gets mocked quite a lot. It's probably about 10 miles from where we live and um, it's kind of like a little seaside town, but... We do always have quite good fun there, to be honest. They've undergone quite a bit of regeneration and, um, you know, so they've got quite a few nice things now going on there. And like on the beach, I mean, it's a stony beach. It's not like a lovely sandy beach or anything like that. But what is quite good is the beach is quite quiet normally. Um, it's not really, really busy like the sandy beach that we normally go to. So that's quite a good thing. And um, the other thing is they have got like the lovely kind of park on the beach, if you see what I mean. Um, so as you enter the beach, they've got like a park there. And it's got, um, well, it's got sand, you know, as the base, if you, you know, if that makes sense, rather than like concrete or anything like that. It's just got sand. So it's kind of beach themed. And yeah, it's got loads of nice things for the kids to play on, you know. I mean, obviously not the kids, as in my kids, because obviously the boys are growing up, really. But my daughter, I mean, she loves going there. Um, yeah, we always have quite a nice time when we go there. So we had a really, really nice afternoon. I think it was on Thursday we went there. And yeah, we had a really good time. So, yeah. Right, how many have we done? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight nine nine so let's decorate one up um which one should we do i'm going to just do this one because this one's on the top so why not just do the one that's right there okay let's see what i've got that i can put on here just seeing whether i've got anything kind of like right here now jumping out at me you know to save me looking for other things uh, not sure about that uh-huh sorry i'm just literally kind of searching in my little pile of stuff that's here on the desk got this stamped image Up. 
Okay, I mean, that's quite pretty, isn't it? Um, let's just have a look. I know that there's some um, <laughs> lovely lady out there. She comments quite a lot. Her name is La Joni. That's her YouTube name. I'm not sure whether that's her actual name. So, hi, if you're watching, um, <laughs> I really apologise. I'm so rubbish with names and I never know how to pronounce things. So that's my first thing. And secondly, I never know whether they're actually people's names or whether they're like YouTube names, because obviously there's such a, you know, whole bunch of beautiful names that I'm totally oblivious to. So I'm never sure whether people have actually used their names or whether that's a, you know, a YouTube name. But anyway, I know that she does not like my bows at all so you know and that's absolutely fine because of course you know we all like different things don't we but yeah so I apologize because you're probably cringing now and thinking oh no she's got the bows out <laughs> she's got the bows out because she comments sometimes and says I was absolutely fine until you got the bows out so I do apologize I'm very sorry for uh yeah getting the bows out and I'm just wondering whether to actually cut that head a bit off I'm going to prefer it, I think, without that. Not necessarily all the time, but just on this piece, because it was quite tall otherwise. That's quite nice, isn't it? Uh, just having a look around to see what else I've got. Whether I've got any... And I think pinkish would be really good. And of course, I can't see anything really pink at the moment. That's just typical, isn't it? Um, just wondering whether I could do anything pink over here to tie it in. All right, I've got this warm lipstick. I wonder what that would look like on here. Oh, it's quite bright, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, that one's quite bright. So, no, I don't want to use that. I've got the Victorian velvet here. bit better isn't it toned down a bit so I'm just going to try and go over this lady's dress a bit oh how to like make something just look utterly rubbish oh dear yeah just made that look awful now let me just spray it and see whether see whether that helps at all Well, it's making it a bit easier to move about, if nothing else. So that, I suppose, is quite good. Just put a bit on her hat as well. So she's got the pink up on her hat. Yeah, I think it did kind of need something a bit, um, you know, pink coloured on there. Now, just wondering, I know I did dismiss that other one. So this is Victorian Velvet. The other one was worn lipstick, which I did dismiss because it looked very bright. But I'm just wondering whether I could just use a bit of this on the edges and then tone it with some, tone it down with some of the walnut stain. I mean, to be honest, it's already kind of toned down a bit because obviously I have already been using the walnut stain on there, so... Yeah. Okay. Just kind of makes her stand out a little bit more, doesn't it? So, you know, otherwise she was blending in a bit too much to the background. Right. Again, I'm just seeing what I've got here that's just in the form of scraps that I could just pull in and use. That's not right. Oops, I've got some sheet music here. Oh gosh, very yellow that was. Uh, what else have I got? I want something to kind of bring her out a bit. Just kind of make her stand out a little bit from there. Um, sorry, I'm just rummaging through what else I've got piled here on my desk. To see if I've got anything that would just, just fit the bill. Mm. 
Oh, come on. Got some bit page, so I mean we could just use just some bit page there. That's not the most interesting thing, is it, to be honest? I feel like it maybe needs something a bit white. Or maybe I just need to ink ink the book. Well, not the book, but you know, the pocket. So that is not so white. You know, we'll dull that down a little bit. Okie dokie. Oh, I best hurry up. I'm at like 55 minutes now. Oh, time flies when you're crafting, doesn't it? Flies when you're having fun. So, um, well, I'm having fun. I hope that you guys are having fun. Um, but yeah, I apologise if you're not, especially for having said how fun I'm finding this. Just wondering whether we could have another butterfly. So these are my bright butterflies. So I just wondered whether we could have a bright butterfly to kind of like make it... Yeah, that's quite nice on there. I still feel she needs to be on something. I've got this pink. Aha! How about that? Yeah, let's put that one down. So, again, let's just glue this one down. Oops. Really thirsty. It's cup of tea time, definitely. So, yeah. And I was really hoping to do another video. Um, before going down to pack my things but to be honest thinking really I need to go and get that washing out onto the line and um, yeah should probably kind of get my priorities straight shouldn't I crafting after <laughs> after chores oh dear that just isn't the natural order of things at all is it crafting after chores I mean who wants to do that definitely definitely not me Crafting before chores, that's much more like it. Right, I'm just going to cut this down. So this is some beautiful lace that I received in a happy mail. Let's just cut that down, cut it in half. Oops. Only because it's quite wide and then I can obviously, you know, it will go further being cut in half, can't it? Because I can use it then in other, other pieces. Oh, that's quite pretty. So, right, I'm going to glue that on now. I'm going to just use my hot glue for this. So let me just get my hot glue gun. Okay, oops, sorry, I'm just oh, picking the drippy hot glue off of it. So, okay, just pop that lace down there. Okay, and then we're going to have this just here on there. Again, I'm just going to be super lazy and just hot glue this down. Might just even put it as like a pocket. Again, you know, like I always say, I might not even use that as a pocket. But by gluing it down like that, you've always got the option, haven't you? Which is nice, you know, nice to have the option. Going to have the bow to the side. Okay, like that. Now, the only thing I'm now not sure about is this butterfly because it's now looking like a little bit too bright, perhaps. So, let me just see whether this one might be better. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Just suddenly just looked a little bit too on the bright side. So, okay, let's just pop this one down. like that okay so and then obviously you know you've got your pockets inside I haven't inked those yet so let me just quickly quickly get a bit of ink on there like that okay and then you know could just put like a piece of lace or something you know and that just ties in the front and the the inside a little bit so yeah let's just pop that down there okay oh pretty pretty 
So then what I would do, I mean, I have used string with these quite often in the past. So I've got my little ball of string here and all I would do is thread this around and tie it. Oops. Oh gosh, I've got way too much string here. <laughs> tie it in a bow like that. And then cut that down. And then what you could do is obviously glue your string onto the back here. And then that's how your pockets kept closed on the page, is just with the string. Obviously, if you didn't want to use string, you could use baker's twine or something. You know, you don't have to use string or a tie closure at all. You could just paper clip it to the side, you know, have you like. And then I would just glue it on three sides and have it as a side loading pocket on a page. So, you know, again, I'm finding these um, reruns really helpful because I just forget all the pockets that we've made over the time. And, you know, I actually really like these pockets, like I've said every week. And, you know, I don't really kind of tend to use these that much anymore because, of course, you know, we've come up with other ideas and, you know, all of that stuff over time. So, yeah, might kind of um, make some more of these. So, yep, I hope that you you are all enjoying the uh, reruns as I am. And, yeah, thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you guys soon. Thanks then. Bye.